All right. Hi, everyone. So my name is Martha. I'm the coordinator for the Money Management Center. So now I want to introduce, uh, hopefully people will remember her. She presented not long ago. She is Noemi Valenzuela from EECU, who has a great presentation today on fraud prevention. So I'm going to go ahead and um, hand it over to you, Noemi, but I will be checking the chat box or if people have questions along the way, I will make sure to let you know. But if anything, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, mute myself and, but I'm still here. So thank you, Nomi, for everything. Okay, right. hey, thank you. All right, so good afternoon. Uh, again, my name is Noemi Valenzuela. I'm with EECU. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about fraud prevention. Um, I'm going to straight out and say it. So a lot of times when we're talking fraud prevention, it sounds very negative um, and I don't want that. Um, so I want to have the conversation. If you have questions, put in the chat, you know, even comments um, just to kind of lighten the mood a little bit uh, because I know we live um, we live in a very digital world and sometimes things happen, right? So um, again, that's why we're having this conversation about fraud prevention, just to be aware. Um, <clears throat> So again, uh, just these financial literacy uh, sessions, you know, online in person, if you can, please take advantage of it. I think it's a great opportunity and it's going to help, you know, it helps all of us in the future. And um, I think just especially when it's hands on and just knowing that that having that background, that foundation from the very get go, I think helps a lot, especially when you're managing your finances. All right. So. Let's get right into it. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Again, we're going to talk about fraud prevention, give you some tips, you know, um, how to how to keep safe. Again, because we live in this digital environment and um, that affects all of us as it's goods and bands. All right. OK, so first things first, when we're talking fraud prevention, um, there's a difference, right? So we talk fraud and then versus identity theft. So there different things, but they go hand in hand. So uh, let's talk about fraud, right? Um, an example of fraud is when someone uses your credit card uh, to make purchases. So let's say it's like you seeing a charge on your account for a gaming system uh, from a Walmart in Florida, right? And you live in Fresno. So again, it's not yours, but someone's committing fraud using your, um, your financial information or your card. So although this is to be taken very seriously, right? Just the whole fraud thing, um, it's, it seems very small in comparison to how, um, when it, it, it compares to stolen identity, right? It affects your whole life. So again, fraud is, like we can kind of say it's that first step, gotta be careful, right? Take care of that problem because again, it can lead to identity theft. All right, so, I, oops, let's talk about identity theft, right? So identity theft is someone pretending to be you. So they may have personal information, such as your social security, uh, maybe your birth date, passwords to certain accounts. So um, that's why it's very, you know, it's very important to, and I'll, I'll get into it, is keep your logins and your, you know, your passcodes, keep those updated, right? And keep them as, as, uh, as difficult as possible for other people to use, right? Okay. So how do fraudsters get your personal identity or, you know, how do they commit fraud? So there's a few things. There's dumpster diving, there's bail theft, there's lottery scams and shoulder surfing. And we'll touch on each of these. And of course, there's a lot of other things. And there's something that just came out in the news and I'll, I'll touch on it a little later, um, that again, is not on this, um, not in this presentation, but I'd like to talk about it as well. So we'll get into that. All right, so first things first, dumpster diving, right? So that's when a person literally goes through a business or residential trash can or trash bin to find personal information. It could be like, um, anything that has any type of mail that has your personal information, um, account numbers, it can be credit card approvals, loan approvals. So again, they're just looking for information, really gathering information about you or about how to, you know, how to open something under your name. Then there's mail theft. And unfortunately, this is very common, especially in the traditional mailboxes. Uh, so this is when someone breaks into your mailbox and steals mail that, again, may contain some personal information. Again, this is a federal offense, but it happens often, right? So we just got to be really careful. Then there's lottery scams. So this is when you receive, um, let's say, an email notification that you weren't expecting, maybe a phone call, a letter in the mail, and it says you've won a large amount, you know, a large sum of money in, in a lottery. So usually the rule to that is if it's too good to be true, it's probably not, right? So let's just be really careful on that one. Then the final one is shoulder surfing. So this is when someone's literally looking over your shoulder while you're using a laptop. Maybe you're at the ATM um, or just somewhere public 
and you have um, an electronic device, right? So it could be as simple as just walking amongst traffic or walking in, in, in a crowd of people and someone's just literally behind you, right? Maybe you're logging into your, uh, your account on your phone and they can see that information. So it's really important to be aware of our surroundings because again, um, you know, it didn't, may not seem malicious, but if someone's hovering behind you, you don't notice it, they're picking up information that you're putting into your cell phone or, you know, maybe an electronic device. It's really important to be careful. Um, I'll, <clears throat> I'll add my personal, um, my personal circumstance, right? So we were, uh, we were on a family vacation, we were in Vegas, um, and uh, it was crowded. And I have, my husband was uh, checking his account while we were walking. And I noticed someone hovering behind us. Um, again, we were in a crowd, but it seemed, it just seemed odd to me. And uh, right away, I told my husband's like, hey, you know, put your phone away. And he thought I was saying, put your phone away because I'm, we're on vacation, right? No, I was literally like, put your phone away because there's someone hovering behind us. And I think they're trying to get your information. And so um, he reluctantly put his cell phone away, right? Didn't get it, but he was like, okay. Um, put it away. And as soon as he put it in his pocket, the person that was hovering behind us, we kind of lost sight of them, right? So it made me think, right, just giving these, these workshops, giving these classes, knowing what we know in the financial industry, um, I was on high alert. So again, as soon as he put the phone away, I don't know if it was a coincidence, um, but that person just disappeared all of a sudden. So it's really important to be aware of our surroundings. All right. So how do fraudsters obtain your personal identity? Right? How do they commit fraud? Like, what's the what what types of things can they do? So there's a few things. There's uh, breaches, and there's phishing, bishing, and smishing. And I know those sound odd, <laughs> but we'll go through each of those. So breaches is pretty much someone um, maybe getting some personal information, maybe from a network, uh, maybe it's a type of business, or maybe getting into their system and just getting personal information that people have submitted to them, right? Unfortunately, this happens very often. Um, and some of these we don't have control of, right? But that's why we say when you're signing up for stuff, if you can avoid giving your personal information like your social security, your date of birth, right? And they really don't need it, try to avoid it. Uh, there's been a few of them. Um, so we had in July, 2019, um, Capital One had a breach. Um, Equifax as well, that was September 2017. Target in 2013, that was a huge one. Um, there was also a breach in their system, right? It was a big deal because people have their debit cards linked to them and they're linked to their accounts. Um, same thing with Yahoo, uh, 2013 to 2016. Um, others like Facebook, Microsoft, LinkedIn, those all happened in 2021. So again, you know, it happens, unfortunately, because we live in the digital world. So again, if you can avoid giving a lot of information, of personal information, if you don't need to, um, try to avoid it. Okay, so let's get into this, this whole you know, we talked about the breaches. Let's get into the phishing, vishing, and spishing. What does this mean? And all of you, maybe, maybe you, some of you already know, but let's let's uh, let's dive deep into each of them. Right. So the first one, phishing. So it involves fraudulent emails. So it could be that you receive this email. It looks legit, right? Maybe from a legit company. Maybe it's from your personal bank or credit union. Um, maybe like from Apple, right? Because you have an iPhone. Um, maybe. Um, Instagram, whatever it may be, um, it, it really looks legit, okay? So it's asking you to provide an ID number, a PIN, maybe a password, credit card number, or anything similar, right? So one, if you're not expecting it, be on high alert, right? And anytime you get an email that's asking for this type of personal information, um, that's a red flag, right? Let's be careful. Again, if you can limit the where you give your personal information or how much information you give, try to do that. Um, for the financial industry, any credit union, any bank, not just EECU, any credit union or bank will not call you to get, to ask you for your PIN number. That will not happen. We have, you know, as a financial industry, you have to have certain questions that you have to ask the person to identify them, to make sure that it's their account. And we never ask for a PIN, um, not, you know, person to person. So again, you, you gotta be really careful. So on this next screen, you're gonna see a, an example of, phishing, right? So this is a fraudulent email. And you can see at the top, right? Let's start at the top. This was supposedly uh, from Apple, um, but you can see in the email address, right? It does say Apple ID, but there's an e invalid email address linked to that. So again, that's the first red flag. The other one, an attachment, right? If you don't know who this email is coming from, um, if you're not too sure of it, 
don't click on the attachments, right? Try to try to avoid that part. The other thing, look for incorrect spelling because usually you will see that in that fraudulent email. And here you can see the incorrect spelling, purchase iTunes gift, right? The Just the grammar and spelling. So again, we need to be aware of that. Uh, the next one too is poor grammar um, and you can see it on the screen, right? And then the final one is the signature, right? And it could be that we don't know how they sign off on email. But again, regards Apple, that probably would not happen. Um, again, just being high alert. And I know like we live in a fast world. We're constantly like everything's online. We're just, you know, checking our emails really quick. Like, okay, I have a few minutes. I'm going to go through my emails. And sometimes this, you know, we don't think twice about it. And we'll, we'll click, we'll click on an attachment or it's like, oh, what's going on, right? So again, try to slow down, try to see, try to read through it before clicking on anything. Um, because again, it can be a fraudulent email. So again, that's an example of phishing, right? that fraudulent email. The next one we're going to touch on is phishing. So phishing involves a fraudulent call. So the word comes from the combination of word voice and phishing, right? That's pretty much what it is. So again, um, fraudulent call asking for immediate action. Usually it's like, it's it's hurry, right? It's, it's immediate. It's like, I need this right now. Um, so it's uh, asking you to provide some type of PIN, some type of credit card, call us back, give us your information because this is happening. And especially right now, like during the tax season, uh, we will get a lot of those fraudulent calls. Like right away, there's something wrong with your taxes or you know, there's something with your social security, give us a call back and they'll try to get personal information like your account number or any types of PINs. So be on high alert on that. So again, when you receive an, uh, a fraudulent call like this, usually on the iPhones, it'll tell you it's most likely a scam call. Sometimes those come through and it's not tagged as scam call. But if you have doubt, right? If you answer a call and they're asking for your personal information, say, hey, you know, uh, let me have a 1-800 number and I'll call you back. Uh, with that 1-800 number, you know, when they're at, when you ask for that, usually they hang up. Um, you start asking more questions, usually they'll hang up. Or if they do give you uh, a 1-800 number or some type of contact number, what you can do is you can Google that. And usually uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, sites online uh, that people have put together and it's like, hey, this is a fraudulent call, you know, just be careful or um, I called this back and this is what they gave me. So, you know, you if you have the time, look it up. But again, if they're asking for personal information over the phone, don't, don't do that. Uh, and it's also, if it's from a company that you have an account with or just um, a financial institution, you can call them directly just to verify. All right, so the next one. Smishing. So this involves a fraudulent text message. And in our environment, I personally, and I'm sure that's the case with everybody, these come in so often, especially to my phone. Um, I just, I have a business phone, I have a personal phone. Um, and I get it on both, right? Constantly, constantly getting um, getting these types of, of smishing messages. So um, it involves a text message and uh, supposedly from maybe your credit union or your bank or any other company where you may have um, some type of logins with them or some type of profiles. And maybe they're talking about suspicious purchase or maybe they're saying, you know, this, uh, you need to update your account. You know, whatever the case may be, you have to call a certain number or do this. And then once you call, a person answers pretending to be that company or the bank or the credit union. And that's when they request your confidential information, like your pins, your account numbers. Again, a credit union, a bank will never ask for that online or through text message. So be aware of that. On this next one, you can see on the screen, this was, um, this is an example of a fraudulent text message, right? So if you look at it, um, there's a lot of grammar issues, there's spelling issues, there's a lot of question on it, right? And this is actually something that I received myself. Um, and it, it supposedly was from Amazon, okay? And the very first thing you do, if you look at the top um, where it says who it's from, that right there was the red flag for me. It's like, okay, one, Amazon wouldn't be texting me. I, I never signed up for this. Uh, no, it wouldn't be happening. But at the top, that's not a legit number. It's not even, you know, an email. It's, it wouldn't be Amazon. So. As you go down into the email, you can see all the mistakes. So on this next one, you can see, I, you know, the circled um, mistakes, maybe grammar errors, spelling errors, whatever it may be. But those again are all red flags. And when we're in a hurry, yes, it's easy to just go by and say, okay, maybe I need to call Amazon or maybe I need to click on this link. Avoid clicking on links anytime. 
especially when you it's a text message and it's questionable because that again will will affect you. On this next one too is more um, more examples, and again it's the Apple ID, right? These are legit like. If you have an Apple account or, you know, if you if you have an iPhone right away, that's going to be like high alert. It's like, wait, what's going on with my account? And um, we get into this whole mode where it's like just, oh, my gosh, what's going on? Right. And we start freaking out and it's easy for us to just say, OK, well, let me click on it and take care of it. Well, try to step back right when this happens. Look to um, your Apple ID. Go directly. Go directly into the website or go directly into your app or your phone and log in directly. Try to avoid using the links. And this other side on the right, I skipped the first one. I'll go back to it. But the first, the last one on the right too, uh, Wells Fargo. This was actually someone, um, uh, we were doing a workshop and someone showed us this, this text message. But again, um, not from Wells Fargo, right? And it's, it says, please go to here and this link. Again, don't click on it. If you need to call them directly and that'll be a lot safer. Uh, but the same thing, Netflix account, this has been going on for a while. Um, I've gotten very soon as we do these fraud uh, workshops, a lot of people would say that they got this Netflix um, text message. So again, right, it can happen. It looks legit, but we need to slow down and say, okay, wait, let me log in directly to Netflix, make sure it's mine, make sure that this is a legit message. If it's not, well, you just avoided that whole issue of clicking on a link because you went with them directly. And please, if there's any questions, um, you can add them in the chat. Uh, feel free to, uh, to ask. All right. So how do we help prevent fraud and identity theft, right? The first thing is check your credit report. Um, check your account activity, check your bank statements. I know it's a hassle, right? Again, we live in a fast paced world. It's like, I don't have time for that. But it's very important because in the long run, it's gonna keep you safe. Now, if you suspect any type of fraud um, on your account, maybe your personal information, the very first place you're going to see it is on a credit report. So as a financial institution, we recommend to check your credit report. And checking your credit report, you get to check it once uh, for free every year. Right? There's three credit reporting agencies where we'll get to, but check your credit report. Make sure everything on there that's yours. Your account activity, right? This is a big key here. Your account activity, if you're checking it, um, sometimes, you know, again, just going through, you're seeing a charge for like $1.50 maybe on your account. You're like, oh, I don't know what that is, but it's not a big deal. It's only $1.50. Maybe I really did do it. Okay, so maybe that's the case, right? But Usually fraudsters, that's how they start the process. So they'll test it. They'll test the waters with maybe $1.50. The next time, maybe it's $3. The next time it's five. And all of a sudden they just hit your account and took all your money, right? So even if it's a small amount, be aware of it. Like know where your money is going, know where you've spent that money. And if it's questionable, you can call. Um, call your credit union, call your bank and maybe get some more information. Also, I know it's tagged differently. When you look at your account activity, the way uh, some of the charges go in, maybe there's acronyms or maybe the company, the parent company is named different from the store that you went to. You can always Google it, right? And it'll tell you there. Um, and if not, again, you can call your bank or your credit union. Also look at your bank statements. Same thing, looking at that activity, um, especially if you have a credit card, if you have just a normal account, look at those statements and make sure that everything that on there actually belongs to you. The next thing is be unique. And by be unique, I mean when we're looking at passwords, when we're looking, where we're looking, we're doing um, logins, you know, setting up profiles, be very unique with your passwords and don't use the same password for every single login because that right there is, again, another red flag. Uh, let's say that someone does, you know, Froster does get a hold of your login and they're able to log into this account automatically they're going to try different logins in different situations or different websites to see if it matches, right? And unfortunately, people do that. Uh, why? Because it's hard to remember all these passwords. It really is, right? But try to be unique with each one. The other thing, check your mailbox. Yes, I know. Check your mailbox. <laughs> Um, just check your traditional mail because, again, we're talking about um, those mail thefts, right? It's just just to keep safe. Um, we just recently had a break in into our mailboxes here in our neighborhood, and that was that was a big deal. Um, you know, it, it's kind of scary. It's like, okay, well, I had personal stuff coming in. What if they took that? So again, we had to you know go through the process. So I have a, a question in the chat it says, how often should we update our passwords? Um, 
I would say as often as possible, like as a, as an organization, um, sometimes you hear, you know, some organizations, I'm sorry, organizations will change their passwords every three months, right? Your, your typical login. Um, you know, if, if you have, if you think fraud is happening or you're getting these spam emails, maybe change it more often. Um, but as often as possible, if that makes sense. So I would say safe, like two to three months, every two to three months. All right. So again, check your mailbox, okay? Because um, that could be a big one too. All right. Other ways, shred your documents or unwanted mail. And I know this is a hassle because in some places it does cost, um, but if you can shred your documents, you know, maybe even cutting up in little pieces, if you don't have access to a shred, a shredder, I'm sorry, that's going to help you. Again, the more difficult you can make it for someone to get your information, the better. Um, I don't recommend it, and I'm going to say it out loud, I shouldn't, but I had a neighbor that would, um, every like once a month, they would, <laughs> they would get all their unwanted mail, they would put it in a bin, in a metal bin, and burn, burn it, so they would set it on fire, I'm like, I don't recommend that, <laughs> one, it's bad for the environment, but it's not safe, <laughs> so if you can take it to uh, any type of shred, or by your own shredder, I think that's, that's the best bet. Um, also, be careful with the information that you post or share on social media, right? Um, there's a couple of things with this. One thing is that, I, again, I mentioned as a financial institution, we're required to ask certain, uh, certain questions to verify that it's you, right? And there's, you know, you've previously given answers that they're stored and we make sure that you answer those correctly, make sure it's you. Some of those questions, um, they're placed on social media, right? So if you're answering one of these questions, a lot of times it's just questionnaires or um, just recently I saw this, so it was on Instagram, someone was talking about their small business, which is great, but they started talking a lot about their personal life, like what their likes are, whether, which is, you know, it's nice, you're trying to connect, but a lot of those questions that that person answered or that person gave on Instagram are actual questions that are asked in a lot of places like financial institutions or just personal information when you're trying to get into an account. Um, not only a financial institution, but others as well, right? Who, who store your personal information. And I thought to myself, oh no, that's, that's not good, right? But that's how people do this. It's like fraudsters are constantly, they're just collecting information. So if they have the answers to these questions, like, you know, where did, uh, what was your first elementary school? Or what was the name of your first teacher? Or what was your favorite color? So these questions can be, um, you know, they're, they're, they're very private, right? And sometimes it can be part of the answers that you give when you're, when you're, uh, they're asking for your personal information or you're calling it to your bank, I'm sorry. Uh, the other thing, be aware of strangers contacting you. So again, going back to those phone calls, um, if you don't recognize the number, which I'm known for that, uh, if I don't recognize the number, I'll just wait for it to go to voicemail. I'm like, okay, if they didn't leave a voicemail, it wasn't that important. And if it's important, they'll call me back. But um, be aware of people calling you that you don't know, um, because again, they'll try to get information. Um, unfortunately, there, it's very common, especially just in our fraud department, that a lot of people will meet people on the phone. Um, and this person's just a scammer, right? Unfortunately, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's, it, it turns into a relationship. Don't get me wrong, like, you know, a legit per, uh, relationship, but be aware because there's people and organizations that uh, focus on this exactly just to prey on people and get their contact information, get their, you know, get their logins, get, have people send money to them. It's just, it's horrible what happens, but just be very aware of strangers contacting you. All right, next one. When visiting websites, right? Um, make sure that when you go to a website, it has the HTTPS or the lock icon. That right there um, will symbolize that it is secure, a secure website. And look for this, especially if you're making, um, you're making a, a, you're trying to buy something online. You're making a purchase. Um, I recently fell into this. Um, I didn't again, right? I give these workshops. I work in a financial institution, and it just totally slipped me. Um, I was trying to buy some sweatshirts online. Um, I had Googled the company. Um, someone had recommended them to me. And what happened, um, there was fraud. Uh, and why? Because when I entered my information, I did not look for this. I did not, because it was recommended to me, my, you know, I just was not thinking. Um, but it didn't have the lock icon, didn't have HTTPS, and um, I, got, I got fraud out of my account. 
So again, let's just be aware, right? So make sure if you're putting any personal information, make sure it has HTTPS, it has the lock. Uh, you can also do this on your devices. Usually it shows as well. If there's question about it, you can always look it up on the Better Business Bureau page. Um, and that right there, they usually have a list of, um, of websites that are fraudulent or you know, recommend that maybe they've had issues in the past. Maybe you don't go to them. Maybe you don't purchase from them. All right, next one. Uh, keep your software and antivirus updated on your devices. Uh, same thing with your, you know, with your personal cell phones, um, your cell phones in general, make sure those are updated. And, you know, usually they're updated for a reason, especially the software on your laptops. There could be, you know, just something that it's open to fraud, right? Just something that's on your computer. And that's why they do the updates every little while. So that way those doors are closed. So it doesn't, you know, they can't get your information, but keep it updated as much as possible. Um, that's going to help you in the long run. The other thing is secure your Wi-Fi. So when you get Wi-Fi, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll give you a generic password. Change the password, right? Because those generic passwords are, um, they're just systematic. So they're just coming into a network. And so people pick up on that, especially fraudsters pick up on that. So they'll go through a list. I mean, this is what they do for a living, just fraud. So they'll go through a list and, you know, there's networks that do this and they'll try to hit Wi-Fi with this password. And sometimes they get into your Wi-Fi. So if you can change that Wi-Fi password, make it personal, make it difficult. And again, be changing that one as well. Um, again, just a personal stance on this one, um, the Wi-Fi, and I'm putting my parents, <laughs> I'm putting my parents here out there, but so uh, my parents had a couple of years ago had gotten uh, a new Wi-Fi uh, company. And so when they set up their Wi-Fi, they set it up at their, as their phone number. Um, and I don't know how they even, you know, they let them do that, but they had it as their phone number. So I remember we were trying to get into the Wi-Fi. I'm like, okay, what's the Wi-Fi password? They're like, oh, it's the phone number. I'm like, wait, let's not do that because everybody knows our phone number. Let's, let's not do that, right? So right away we changed it, made it a little more difficult. And it is, they have, uh, my mom now has an alarm on her cell phone to be changing it every two to three months. So again, you know, stuff like this happens. Uh, the other thing is sign up for alerts with your bank or your credit union. Uh, this will help. Um, especially with fraud. And it, you know, personally, it, it helps with my finances as well. But you can set it up where um, maybe if your account goes below a certain amount, you'll get an alert. Maybe if there's a purchase or some type of transaction made over a certain amount, you'll also get an alert. And again, you sign up directly with your bank or your credit union. Make sure you save that address that it comes from or that phone number it comes from. So that way you know it's legit. But again, what they'll do is they'll just send you a generic email. I mean, a generic text message saying uh, there is um, potential fraud, you know, give us a call. And you call the bank or the credit union directly. There's no links in the text message. There's no phone numbers. You call directly. Uh, but again, that'll help, right? Again, just as many layers as you can place to keep yourself safe, that's going to help in the long run. All right. So other tips. And I mentioned this before, create different passcodes for each of your devices. Try not to use the same one. Um, maybe you mix it up, right? Add some numbers, add some letters, or make it sentences, whatever it may be. But just make it difficult for someone to, you know, if they were to steal your information or get your logins, make it difficult for them to get into the next device, right? Again, those layers of, of, um, of prevention, you can say. Never share your pins. Unfortunately, the number, the, I won't say well, the number one, but the, one of the top uh, reasons there's fraud is because maybe there's a family member that knew the pin and got into the uh, got into the account or sold the money from another family member. It's unfortunate, I know, but again, don't share your pins. Um, be aware of your surroundings at all time because remember they're shoulder surfing people or just you know fraudsters. This is what they live off of. They're just trying to get information. The other thing is limit what you carry in your purse or your wallet. Do not carry your social security. If you can avoid it, avoid it at all possible. I know that sometimes you do need it, but don't carry it with you all the time. Because if someone were to steal, you know, maybe someone steals your wallet or your purse, um, that social security, that is a link to a lot of things, a lot of your personal information. That's how they can get into a lot of things. Um, so again, um, even limit the number of credit cards or the number of debit cards that you carry with you if you have more than one. Um, making it difficult just in case something happens right? You don't, you don't give them access to all those cards. The other thing too, that's not, um, that is not on here is 
on your devices, like your cell phone, right? A lot of us pay digitally. We pay with Apple Pay, Wallet Pay, or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but when you place a passcode or maybe um, any type of other, you know, layer of, of uh, a safety onto your device, that makes it that much more difficult for someone who are a fraudster or someone who steals your phone to get into your accounts. And again, I'm going to put my personal my personal thing on here. Um, my husband, uh, he's a soccer referee. He had a game. And um, in his backpack was his cell phone and a lot of his own stuff. So while they were playing, you know, it was typical that they leave their backpacks laying around. Well, someone stole the cell phone out of his backpack. That cell phone was linked to his accounts. That cell phone did not have a passcode to get in. It didn't even have like face ID, nothing. It was just open. So that was very difficult. And like, it took so much time to try to clean that up, right? We had to put a lock on all the accounts. We had to change, you know, the the card number, the account number, it was just crazy. Uh, but it could have been prevented. We could have just prevented by putting a passcode on there. So, you know, stuff like this happens, unfortunately. All right. And I said this at the very beginning, right? Check your credit report. That is going to be the number one place you're going to find it if someone is, uh, if you have fraud on your account, your personal information. The three credit reporting agencies that I had uh, mentioned earlier that we have on here, it's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Those are the places that you can go to to get your uh, credit report. You can go directly to these sites um, or you can go to annualcreditreport.com and they'll pull it from these three companies. So again, it's free once a year. Um, I say, you know, maybe you check it with one, maybe with Equifax, wait a few months and then quick check it with Experian, wait a few months and check it with TransUnion. Um, that way you're, you know, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. You're, you're not just getting all at once in, in one year. So again, check your credit report. And another thing too is it's good to check your credit report, even for your personal finances, because there can be, um, Maybe you had debt that you didn't know about, right? If you pull that credit report, you're going to see it right there. So, it, you know, I think it's a win-win. You know what's on there. You know what banks or credit unions are looking at um, when they're looking at your credit report. It's just good to know. I think it's healthy. And it helps prevent the fraud, too. All right. So we're talking about the types of frauds. Um, but what happens if um, you find fraud on your, you know, a fraudulent transaction on your account, or you notice that there is fraud, someone's stealing your personal information. So the first thing to do is contact your bank or your credit union and let them know um, because there they have, there's multiple steps that they, um, that they're obligated to go through with you. And that'll start the process. The other thing is dispute the charge, right? This is going to take some paperwork. And usually when you contact your bank or your credit union, they'll walk you through this. But if there's a charge on your account for, let's say, maybe they bought that gaming system, right, at Walmart in, I don't know, in Florida. So those $500, $600, you can dispute those because they don't belong to you. Will it be a process? Yes, it will be a process. Will you get your money right away? No, you will not, right? But we try to make it as especially easy. We try to make it as quick as possible. And all financial institutions do. Uh, the other thing is request, request a new account, maybe a new account number, whatever it may be, right? If Because if they already have access to this account, that's not good, right? I know it's going to be a lot of work because then you have to change your, you know, they have to ship you a new debit card. But, you know, the safer that you can be, the better. Because if they've already gotten your information once, they're going to try to hit your account again. The other thing is if you have, you know, if there was a fraudulent transaction on your account, change on your passwords, um, anything that's linked to that account too, maybe the email, just change all your passwords. You know, and, and if you change it, like I said, if you change it often, maybe this will help as well. And the other thing is contact the vendor where the fraud occurred. And what does that mean? So let me uh, let me give you a scenario. And this is real life. This actually happened. So um, there was a fraudulent um, transaction on my account. Luckily, I had signed up. You know, I signed up for text messages. And so I was shopping around and um, I got a text message saying that there was a potential fraudulent charge for a hundred and almost $200 on my account. So, and it was at a certain restaurant. So I was like, okay, one, I haven't been to that restaurant. Um, I had like, I don't know, like four or five months beforehand, but I wasn't at the time, right? So I was, I was in Target. <laughs> so let's just say that, that's where I was. I was at the store. So um, I called the bank and let them know, hey, you know, this is a fraudulent charge. Don't let it go through because it's not mine. So I started asking more questions and we, we started the process. But it turned out that, like I said, beforehand, um, we had gone, we had been um, in the L.A. area and uh, we had gone to that chain restaurant. 
when I paid, uh, when we were done eating, I paid for our meal, but I noticed, right? I noticed that they weren't charging my card with like they would really do like, you know, where you run your debit card, the little, the little machine. So um, I said, well, why are we not using the machine that's here? And the person said, well, our, our system is down. He was, unless you have cash. And I'm like, okay, well, no, I don't carry cash, right? So um, I let them run my card, which I knew at that point, it was a big red flag for me, but I was kind of stuck. I'm like, I didn't have cash. I couldn't say, well, you know, let me come back and pay you. Well, that wasn't going to work either. So what was going on was I, I, you know, back in the 90s, what they would do is they would run your credit card and it was all on paper. So they would make copies of the copy, give you one sheet and give you, and they would keep the other sheet and it all it has all your credit card information. That's how they were running uh, the payment. Okay. Again, red flag for me, but I was kind of stuck in the situation. So what was going on was when I got this fraudulent charge, it was from that restaurant. So um, I called the vendor. I called that restaurant directly when I heard, you know, when I knew what was going on. And I let them know. I talked to the manager and said, hey, you know what? I was there some months ago. This is what happened. And now I'm getting a fraudulent charge um, saying that I was at your restaurant and I spent my $200 on a meal. And so the manager was openly, he openly said it and said, hey, you know, we had uh, an employee who was stealing information. They were saying that their system, our system wasn't working and they were, that's how they were getting credit cards. So that's how easy it was, right? It was very easy. I, and what was I going to do in that situation? Um, now I look back, there was a lot of things I could have done, but it was something so simple. Um, and it, it, you know, it backfired on me because later on there was fraud on my account. So again, just be aware. So contact the vendor, let them know, right? Let them know because it could be that maybe they don't know and maybe there is someone at that space where who's, who's, create, who's, uh, who's doing some fraud and they need, they need to know about it. The other thing is file a fraud or police, uh, fraud or police report. Um, make sure it's in the books, right? Because usually with fraudsters, they've been doing this for a while. So the more people who can um, report it, right, the easier it is to stop this person from, or this group of people from doing this over and over again. And then monitor your accounts. We talked about that earlier. Make sure that everything that's going through does belong to you and it's actually yours. Uh, before I go on, any other questions? You can put them in the chat. And like I said earlier, I know this turns into, I feel like it's such a negative vibe when we're talking about fraud. And um, I promise that's my, not my intention, but I, I think it's really important for us to be aware of the different things that go on, right? Because again, there's groups of people, there's people who live off of this. This is what they do for a living. So they're going to try to find, I mean, you know, look for information under rocks. I mean, that's just the way it is. Okay, so I, I didn't have any more questions. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, okay, that was another question. I'll let you answer that, Martha. <laughs> um, other things to do if I find fraud or suspect someone is using my account information or my information. Place a fraud alert on your credit reports. Um, again, calling the credit reporting agency directly. They'll help you through that. Um, file a police report in your city. That's going to help as well. And you can go directly to your website, right? Um, you know, wherever city, whatever city you live in. And then report fraud to the Federal Trade Commission. Um, that's going to help you. Uh, one, because again, these are networks of people, of groups of people who are doing fraud all the time. This is what they do. And, you know, the more that we report it, the better, because then we can stop it from happening, the easier to stop it from happening. And here is the um, Federal Trade Commission, identitytheft.gov. And this uh, website, I recommend it, right? If you're in this situation or just wanna learn more about what we've talked about today, just the um, identity theft, fraud in general, there's a lot of very useful information here and it, it helps a lot. But again, you can report it here as well. If there's a fraudulent charge or if you know identity, some type of identity theft, this will walk you through the process and it, it has forms online. Again, make sure it's the correct address um, and make sure you have that, uh, the HTTPS and the lock, the lock symbol. All right. So all in all, right, when we're talking about fraud, just in general, just tidbits, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably fake. <laughs> uh, we talked about that with the lottery earlier, right? Yes, you win $100,000. Well, maybe not, right? Let's, let's, uh, if it sounds too good to be, it's probably, it's too good to be true, it's probably fake. Uh, think before you click or think before you tap, right? Don't uh, tap on that link. Um, think twice um, and slow, just you know, force yourself to slow down. 
we have to force ourselves to slow down because that can be linked to another type of fraud. And you know, that's when it turns into a bigger mess. Be aware of your surroundings. Anytime you're on your device, anytime you're, you know, whatever it may be, you're logging in, just be aware, even conversations, right? People are always, you know, fraudsters are always looking for more information to gather just to try to do what they do. So just be aware. Um, passwords, don't use the same one for everything. Uh, again, change it as often um, and, you know, play around, use sentences, I, you know, be unique um, because that's going to help you later. on. All right. So do I have any other questions? That was a lot of information I threw at you in just a little bit of time. But let me know if you have questions or any comments just of, um, you know, just learning the stuff that we talked about today. Let me stop sharing my screen. All right. I didn't check the answer question box. Here we go. So the question was, how do we go about filing a fraud report with the FTC? So just go to their website directly. Um, <clears throat> and from there, it does, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, self-explanatory once you're there, it, they make it so easy. So they have different scenarios. Maybe you're, you're reporting fraud, maybe, you know, some identity theft, whatever it may be. And they take you through different steps. Um, and that that pretty much will, will, will help you. So it's just going to their website directly and they'll they'll walk you through it. And there's a lot of uh, information that I think this is Stephanie. That, yeah, Stephanie, there's a lot of uh, good information on there um, that'll actually help, you know, just in the future and just the things we do day to day. What is the recommended threshold for doing this? Um, I'm not sure threshold. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, maybe I'm going to I'm going to assume here we go. <laughs> I'm going to assume that maybe there was fraud on your account. Um, the minute you find it, let's go report it, you know, as soon as possible. All oh, the amount of money. Um, go with your bank. So if it's, if it's a low amount, you know, report it to your bank and they'll kind of, or your bank or your credit union, and they'll let you know. Um, they'll kind of guide you through it. Because if it's a low amount, they, it can be taken care of the, at this level, right? At the bank or the credit union. Um, and then from there, if it's a larger amount, usually that's when you would, um, you would report it to the FTC. So I know I didn't give you an actual amount, <laughs> but let's say anything under $100, go to your bank or your credit union, um, and they'll kind of walk you through it and recommend whether or not you should report it. If it's over that, I'd say do it. And again, you a lot of people, you know, they're very... Um, when it comes to money, personal money, they'll say, you know what, you see $5, let's do it, right? And uh, go for it. <laughs> but I say you can work with your bank or your credit union at first. And then from there, just um, they'll recommend what steps you should take. That's a good question. Oh, and I'm sorry. I, I know we're, I think we're almost out of time, but I, I forgot. I said this at the beginning, um, but a different type of fraud. And this just came out um, not too long ago in the news. It was a big deal. It was during spring break, actually, that came out. So, um, uh, charging, charging, especially devices or your cell phones with a USB charger. Um, so there's fraud going on with the USBs, right? So a lot of people will do if they're at an airport or they're at a public, um, I forgot what those are called, uh, public charging stations. So a lot of people will just use their USB and charge it like that, um, you know, the, on the other side of their, of their cord. That has been linked to some fraud. So if you can avoid that, um, do it. Um, try to avoid using those USBs. If you have a plug, right, um, your, um, your uh, I'm, my gosh, my mind is going completely blank. But if you have, you know, your charger with the two prongs, use that. Try to avoid using the USB and connecting the USB to charge your phone into a public, um, a public device or a public charging device. Because again, it's been linked to, to some fraud. So just be aware of that. Sorry, I totally went a blank. I had it all in my mind, I totally went blank. But like I said, as many layers as you can um, to help prevent fraud, the better, you know, layers of security for yourself. Uh, that's just gonna, going to help you a lot.
Does it happen? Yes, it does. But we went through the steps that you should you should take to help yourself as well or to report it. All right. Well, if we don't have any other questions, um, that's all I have for today. I want to thank you for being here and just taking the time out of your day just to um, to be here at this workshop, this presentation. And I really hope um, it helped. You know, so the tidbits here and there got some good questions, and I appreciate that. So again, I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Noemi, for this great presentation. Really good tips. I didn't know about that, um, about the USC charging. Yeah. So thank you for letting us know about that, just to be for cautious. Sure. Um, yes. But thank you, everybody. I am taking attendance, so I, you don't have to worry about submitting a survey or reporting anything. Um, we are recording the session, so it should be on our website, hopefully within the next week or so. But thank you, everybody, for joining us. And thank you again, Noemi, for the great yeah. presentation. Thank you. All right. I hope everybody has a good day.